Welcome adventurer, my name is Korok DM and I create videos about D&D and world building. Let's go on a journey and I will share my secret to creating a game night that the players will definitely never forget and that will end you a spot in several reddit posts retelling the tale of this epic session. TPK the whole party using Jar Jar Binks. A defeat so hilariously dumb they will never forget it. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. But jokes aside, boss fights should be a highlight of the game. Properly set up they can be the most memorable thing of the whole adventure. Poorly set up they are just another, maybe more difficult, enemy to overcome. So let's open the chest and see what we got to give you advantage for creating a memorable boss encounter. I'm Korok DM and this is how to create boss fights. Boss fights are usually the highlights of an adventure, marking the final of a story arc or even the whole campaign. Getting them right can help you create an unforgettable experience for your players or at least make sure that everyone has a fun session and leaves the table with a smile. I want to tell you how I view boss encounters and what tools I use to make them more compelling. Most of the monsters straight out of the monster manual just don't satisfy my needs as a DM to create cinematic boss fights. There are three kinds of boss fights I use in my games. The big boss, the boss and their minions and the mini boss team. The first tends to feel more epic but is also the easiest while the last is the hardest while feeling more like a standard encounter. The middle one is taking advantage of both and has normally a medium difficulty. I will tell you my basic view on these three and then share some handy tools and tricks to shape an encounter to your needs and adjust the difficulty of each of them. The big boss looks the most threatening but the action economy is heavily stacked in favor of the players. The players can just overwhelm the enemy with actions while the bad guy acts only once a turn. If the players don't use abilities that deny them even that. On the plus side you can take a pretty strong enemy with a high CR and can be sure the players will be able to handle it. You just have to avoid the pitfall of making them too strong in order to counter the action economy. Be it the criminal overlord and their henchmen, the crazy wizard and their summons or a wild beast and its young. Adding weaker monsters can spice up a boss fight in itself. However, if we just add them to the big boss as mentioned before, things tend to become just harder. Not necessarily a bad thing for a memorable boss fight, but we don't just want to ramp up the difficulty, we try to have fun. So be careful with this one. Let's assume we keep this boss fight roughly the same difficulty as the other. We have the advantage in regards of the action economy, so the players won't overwhelm the boss immediately. The players also have an opportunity to use some IOE or crowd control abilities. It is always a great thing to give the players plenty of opportunity to use their favorite abilities and using adds is a good way to do so. The difficulty is not too high as adds tend to be taken out fast and then it's just the PCs and the boss. The last entry refers to multiple equally strong enemies sharing the spot of the boss. They are not so easily overwhelmed and reduced in numbers making their good position in the action economy more stable and the overall fight more intense. These fights tend to be less epic because each individual enemy is not that big of a threat. Fighting another party of adventurers with the same goal tends to feel less of an accomplishment than say the ancient guardian beasts of this forgotten tomb. Even if adventurers are far more threatening. So let's talk about how to spice things up and give your games the edge that makes them just that little bit more memorable. Pick one of the three types of boss fight and start adding to that basis. It is a good starting point if you choose a monster from the monster manual. Something that might suit your needs but as long as the difficulty is roughly what your players can handle everything else is optional and can be changed as we need it. Flavoring a boss fight starts long before you roll for initiative. The boss fight is the culmination of build up and foreshadowing. You want the players to long for or to fear the moment they finally face their enemy. Let them find notes describing the boss or maybe they overheard a muffled conversation. In other cases they may have been hunting for their enemy and finally got them cornered. Done right the boss fight feels so much more like it was meant to be there in contrast to a thrown in random encounter. Think about what tone you want to establish for the boss fight. 
If you want a tense and hectic fight against an unknown horror, use confined spaces, sparse lighting and noises in the distance echoing through the area. If they fight a crazy wizard, sprinkle in some arcane beasts let loose and strange magic effects occurring all over the dungeon. Use encounters related to the theme of the boss fight, so you build up the tension till it reaches its climax. If you design the boss fight as part of the whole picture and not as a standalone encounter, it gives the boss fight more emotional weight to it. You can control the difficulty and the atmosphere of the boss fight by designing the stage on which it will all take place. We already have chosen a theme, so it should be no hardship to apply it to the arena the players are going to fight in. When you describe the area, it is not only to set the right mood. The most important thing is that you want to establish the terrain early, so it seems natural if the boss uses that environment to its advantage, even if you are totally improvising to balance the difficulty on the fly. At the same time, it gives the players the opportunity to get creative with their surroundings. If you reward good ideas, players will become more likely to listen carefully when you describe scenes and will surely remember the one time they had an amazing idea that helped them defeat the boss by using its surroundings. As the fight progresses, don't forget to further integrate the environment into the action. Maybe there is a collapse and now parts of the area are blocked while everyone needs to make a deck safe or is knocked prone. This gives you plenty of opportunity to change things up and to disrupt the rhythm of the players when they think they have got a perfect plan figured out. If you want to make the boss fights last longer, and looking at the standard amount of hit points, we definitely want that if we want to have a chance to make this fight special. There are two options to achieve that. The first option is to increase the armor class, so we reduce the chance of being hit and therefore the damage taken. The other option is to just increase the hit points. Both achieve the same in principle when it comes to increasing the length of the battle, but both have their own downsides. If you increase the AC too much, it can get frustrating for your players if they miss all the time. They will get the boss down eventually, but it won't feel like succeeding, but the luck of random chance. Similar problems can occur if you just crank up the HP. It's like fighting a giant meat bag. At some point it will become clear if they will win or lose, but the fight will drag out for another 30 minutes. I've been there, it's not funny. Memorable in a way for sure, but not necessarily in the way we intend. In fact, one too many of those encounters in the Pathfinder 2 playtest reassured my decision to switch to D&D 5e instead. It still turned out pretty good from what I've heard, but D&D just offers more on the storytelling and homebrew side that fits my taste more. I personally like to increase the AC on ads if I want them to be annoying, but in return give them only a few hit points, so they can be taken out quickly by the martial classes or area of effect spells. For bosses I increase AC only for a short period of time as a special ability, I tell you later more on that point. HP is a good way to increase the length of a fight while the players still have the feeling of progressing. We can avoid the meatbag feeling by using other spices, like the special actions. Dungeons and Dragons offers options for this already in the form of legendary and layer actions. Especially if a single boss is used, the special actions can help fix the imbalance in the action economy. Choose abilities that fit the theme of the fight. If they fight a fire related boss, let them scream as they get hit while fires shooting out of cracks in the ground. Make a deck safe. Giving your boss these special abilities helps to make this a different experience than normal fights and forces the players to think outside the box and expect the unexpected. Just be careful not to overdo it. Three abilities that the boss can use outside of their normal turn order should suffice. You could use one of these abilities as a reoccurring effect like an unstoppable magic vortex that shoots lightning through the room attacking a random person on a 1 to 5 and may banish a person for a round on a 6. If you use multiple enemies, it is always great if the boss has the ability to move them around. They could yell orders and give them an immediate movement action or something like that. This helps to further demonstrate that they are in control of their minions. Should you notice that things go south and you overdid it on the difficulty, you can always change things up. The vortex could collapse, covering an area in a sticky goo, making it difficult terrain. Having backup plans like this one can help you to adjust the difficulty on the fly or just add this little bit of uncertainty that keeps players on the edge. 
Another great move that will definitely give you an edge in future boss fights is if you like this video and subscribe to this channel. And for a secret special move you can ring the bell and make sure you always get advantage on perception rolls to never miss out on a new video. Right as it looks like the evil cultist leader is finally defeated, he mutters a plea in fear. Suddenly a booming voice is heard declaring that if it's power that they crave they should get it. But if they disappoint one more time their punishment will be a severe. Suddenly the body of the cult leader is shaking where they start transforming into an amalgamation of a human and a demon. With this the next stage has begun when the player suspected victory. Stages are a great way to evolve a boss fight. Video games and movies do it all the time. Why shouldn't we as dungeon masters use this narrative tool as well? You can use stage transitions to change one kind of boss fight into another. Imagine a big armored guy with a giant hammer and a swift knight with a lightning lance. So mini boss team fight. If the PCs defeat one of them the other absorbs the power of their fallen comrade and are back to full health with a power upgrade. We enter the next stage a big boss boss fight. If this sounds familiar to you it is because I ripped it straight out of Dark Souls 1. It was an awesome fight and surely a memorable one if it's the first scene I had to think about regarding stage boss fights. My only advice is to tone down the difficulty of each separate stage a bit so they have a better chance of making it through all of them without having a chance to take a rest in between. One quick remark, don't overdo it. I think most of us played at least one JRPG and after the fifth ah you thought you defeated me but this isn't even my final form it gets kinda stale. A great way to change things up is to change the appearance of an enemy. When we boil monsters from the monster manual down they are just stat blocks. You can use them in any way you want. Choose one that fits the difficulty you want to achieve and change them so they fit the situation you want to use them in. Surely there will be a monster out there that perfectly fits your needs but just reskinning it is easy and does something wonderful. It confuses the hell out of metagamers. The moment they realize that this is a monster they have no clue about they stop assuming. Especially if you change some of the abilities and properties. Nothing makes a boss fight more memorable than a crazy plan working or defeating the boss with a super amazing ability a player held back all the encounters before to use it just when the time is right. Imagine a player landing a critical hit while nailing a really cool one liner and then the boss survives with 3 hit points left. The next player finishes the boss off with a normal attack and there's just the sour aftertaste of a missed opportunity. They don't know how many hit points the creature has left, just declare it defeated by the awesome critical hit. Believe me the player landing the final hit will remember that moment. I never heard a person telling me of that amazing time they played by the rules even if it meant the fight being less fun. I mean have you ever heard someone saying I had this amazing plan that would have been super awesome but there was the tiny rule that technically forbids it and luckily the DM knew that and said no what a close call but they saved the game. The rules are guidelines to create fun and amazing moments not to be blindly obeyed as stated in the dungeon master's guide for all the rules lawyers out there. So not always following the rules is in accordance with the rules. Case closed. Have I missed some great tips you know of? Share them with me and the others in the comment section. I'm always excited to improve my repertoire. With this we have reached the end of today's video. I hope it can help you to make your boss fights more memorable. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. You just made my day. Going on this journey is much more fun in good company. If you like what you've seen and know other dungeon masters that might like it please share this video with them. If you want to support me to build up my channel you can also become a supporter on Patreon. Or you can follow me on Instagram if you like to see cool maps with little plot hooks you could use in your own games. I put the links down in the doobly doo. Your dungeon master for this video was DM, and I hope you join me in the next one.